In the days of the American frontier, settlers, explorers, and trappers often faced a threat more immediate than hostile wildlife or harsh weather, the lack of safe drinking water. Streams could run dry, wells were rare, and contaminated water could easily turn a survival situation deadly. Yet, early pioneers developed a clever, largely forgotten method to extract water from seemingly impossible places. This frontier trick allowed them to survive in arid conditions or during long treks through unsettled territory, long before modern filtration systems existed. Today, this technique may seem almost magical, but it is entirely practical, and it still works. Understanding it not only connects us to historical ingenuity, but equips modern hikers, campers, and survivalists with a reliable tool when conventional sources fail. Frontier settlers knew that water could be drawn from the environment, not just streams. When streams ran low or were contaminated, pioneers learned to extract water from the surrounding environment. They discovered that certain plants, tree roots, and even soil could serve as hidden reservoirs of hydration. For instance, many species of willow, sumac, and cattail store moisture within their stems. By cutting and collecting the sap or juice, settlers could supplement their water supply in emergencies. In addition, damp soil, especially near dry creek beds or shaded areas, contains moisture that can be coaxed into collection with simple tools. Modern survivalists can replicate this principle by identifying moisture-rich plants and soil in their area. Before venturing into remote terrain, familiarize yourself with local flora that contains water. Cutting stems from willow or cattail plants or extracting water from bamboo in regions where it grows allows you to gather hydration without relying on rivers or lakes. Simple knowledge combined with observation makes this an effective emergency resource. One of the most remarkable frontier tricks was the solar still, a method of condensing water from soil, plants, or even salty sources. The process was straightforward yet ingenious. A pit would be dug, a container placed in the center, and vegetation or damp soil arranged around it. Covering the pit with a sheet or hide, pioneers would anchor a small rock in the center so that condensation would drip into the container. Sunlight heats the soil and vegetation, evaporating water, which then condenses on the cover and collects in the vessel below. This technique remains relevant today. Modern survival kits often include lightweight plastic sheets or tarps that can replicate the same effect. By digging a small pit, lining it with moist material, and covering it carefully, even desert or coastal environments can yield drinkable water. Practicing this method in controlled conditions is essential. It requires patience and careful placement to avoid contamination, but it's remarkably effective when conventional water is unavailable. Frontier travelers understood that moisture appears in surprising ways. Morning dew, collected from leaves or cloths laid out overnight, was an important water source. In coastal or riverine areas, condensation on tents or rocks could be gathered with simple sponges or cloths and wrung into containers. These small but consistent amounts of water often made the difference between life and death on long treks. Applying this technique today is straightforward. Lay clean, absorbent cloths or sponges in the open overnight, preferably on plants or grass, and squeeze them into a container in the morning. Even in arid environments, 
early morning dew can provide a supplemental source of hydration. While the yield is small, it's enough to extend survival until you reach a more substantial water source. You know, frontier explorers also tapped directly into trees and roots for hydration. Certain species, like maples or birches, store water that can be accessed by cutting a branch or tapping a trunk. In the chill of winter, frozen tree sap could be collected and melted for drinking. Roots, particularly from plants like cattails or burdock, contain water-rich tissues that can be chewed or squeezed to extract moisture. This knowledge, while widely circulated among settlers, was rarely documented in formal manuals, which is why, well, it faded from popular memory. Modern adventurers can, you know, apply this method with a bit of caution. It's important to identify local trees or shrubs that store potable water and then use clean tools to harvest sap or water-rich roots without damaging the plant unnecessarily. Honestly, this method is especially useful during long treks in areas where there just isn't any reliable surface water. The genius of these emergency water techniques really lies not in complex tools, but rather in a particular mindset. Pioneers learned to observe the environment, to understand where moisture naturally collects, and to employ low-tech methods to access it. Whether that's through plant soil condensation or even solar distillation water was never truly absent. It simply required a bit of ingenuity to find. For modern survivalists, this principle is, quite honestly, the ultimate takeaway. Carrying knowledge of natural water sources, combining it with simple tools like a tarp, a container, or even a bit of cloth, and of course, practicing patience, allows you to survive when conventional sources fail. This mindset, you see, transforms environmental obstacles into opportunities for resourceful hydration. The frontier trick for emergency water may have been developed centuries ago, but its lessons remain, well, absolutely invaluable for anyone interested in bushcraft, survival, or historical ingenuity. By observing the environment, harnessing natural moisture, and using simple tools, you can secure hydration in situations where modern conveniences fail. If you found this guide useful, do consider subscribing to Backyard Wisdom and sharing this video with fellow history enthusiasts and survivalists. The wisdom of the frontier continues to offer life-saving solutions today. It's really up to us to rediscover and apply it.